At the turn of the millennia, Europe evolved into a stable society. The wars between nations seemed to be over, but people came to live under restraints of a brand new kind, complex law systems. Over the course of years, governments developed law systems as complex as no ordinary man understood them. They were so complicated that people had to hire experts to help them understood what they could do and what they could not do in their everyday lives. From building their own houses to educating their own children to work for survival, the state regulated every step of its citizens, and those who would even slightly disagree were punished. People were free to survive without violent threats if they complied with the rules, but the governments locked people in a cage of virtual restrictions. In 2015, a man realized the more the law system in his country would develop, the more restrictive life would become. He realized that mankind's only way to the future would be through change. He decided to found a new nation with a completely different approach to its governance that, if successful, would give the rest of the world a lesson in freedom of life. His name was Vit Yedlichka. By his time, such an attempt was considered impossible by most. But because everyone was afflicted by the same restrictive rules of the regimes they lived in, he easily gained followers from many countries across Europe and the rest of the world. He would only need to find a place where the new country would be established, which was already a great challenge. While the whole world was practically taken by one country or another, Jedlička, by coincidence, discovered a small piece of land between Croatia and Serbia by the Danube River that was officially not considered a part of either country. He'd erect a flag of the new nation in this area, formerly known as Gornja Siga, and he'd give a spark to what later was known as the Free Republic of Lieberland. Sympathizers from around the world ventured to this place, which was an uninhabited, empty forest thinking that they would finally find their freedom. But they would not expect that a tribe of native forestmen who partially survived from hunting wild animals in Gornyasiga would decide to counter the Lieberlander's dream. Coming from intellectually developed and educated societies, the Lieberlanders tried to explain to the forestmen that their intentions could economically help the entire surrounding region, including the forestmen themselves, and that Lieberland could give the whole world an example of how to improve the living standard for all. But the forestmen had a completely different way of living. They did not understand. Furthermore, the forestmen were well established in the area, and they simply thought Lieberlanders wanted to invade their forest and take their resources. They allied with corrupt police high ranks from Croatia, and together they started fighting against Lieberlanders, as if they imposed a threat to them. The forestmen, accompanied by Croatian police officers, plundered Lieberlanders' village and started a blockade to prevent Lieberlanders from coming and living in the area. They confiscated all Lieberlanders' property, claiming that they were cleaning the forest from trash. The police took advantage of being a force and broke Croatian laws to discriminate and harass Lieberlanders, steal their property, and even violently attack them. Whenever Lieberlanders even displayed a gesture of disagreement, the police would put them on trial as if they were terrorists and corrupt judges from neighboring Croatian cities would rule Lieberlanders out as guilty. Although their disobedience of Croatian laws was questionable, the police had no jurisdiction in Gornja Sega, a territory that did not belong to Croatia in the first place. The Lieberlanders were forced to live under terrible conditions. They were exhausted from constant attacks from the police and native forestmen. They were tired of being misunderstood. They were persecuted by rigged justice processes that had nothing to do in Lieberland. The police and the forestmen counted on the fact that given the conditions, all Lieberlanders would change their minds and simply go back where they came from, and that the unlawful acts 
of both force men and police officers would be forgotten with no consequences. But Lieberlanders could only see a better future in Lieberland, so they decided to stay. At the same time, they did not want to fight back because any violent response or vandalism towards the police and forestmen felt like a dishonor to their charitable and innovative goals. Lieberlanders were looking for a place to try and live better as an example for everyone, and it was nowhere else to be found. If the Lieberlanders fought back, they would undermine the nature of their intentions to make the world better. So they simply stayed at all costs, and they survived only thanks to the support and donations of their sympathizers from all around the world. Fortunately, in these difficult times, a strong ally for Lieberlanders appeared out of nowhere. Solidarity. While native forestmen and Croatian police did anything to destroy Lieberland they could get away with, the Lieberlanders, instead of retaliation, chose to show the world their actions. Several media platforms kept displaying the police officers and forestmen fighting innocent Lieberlanders. The viewers, ordinary people who very well knew the affliction of modern governance, felt for Lieberlanders. Some Croatian citizens even arrived in Lieberland to apologize for the behavior of their authorities. While at first, the police successfully threatened anyone who'd want to help the Lieberlanders and abused other government authorities to prosecute them, the public opinion on Lieberland strengthened in positivity. As soon as more people from the area were able to learn the Lieberlanders' true intentions, many organizations, including government employees, started resisting the police orders to help them against Lieberland. The forestmen learned from their neighbors that their pursuit of Lieberlanders was against good faith, and they decided to start negotiating with Lieberland peacefully. Later, both sides came to an agreement, which allowed Lieberlanders to stay in their forest and simultaneously allowed the forestmen to hunt the animals, and each of the forestmen was compensated by the Lieberland government. while the police kept acting disgracefully against the Lieberlanders. With the forestmen on Lieberlanders' side, they lost their last confederate. The Lieberlanders were no strangers anymore. They became valued friends and even family for many locals. Public opinion against the persecution of Lieberlanders grew quickly, and eventually, the denizens of nearby towns put pressure on their majors to stop the police rampage against the innocent. Even some police officers turned out to openly disagree with the orders that they were being given from their higher ranks. Soon after, the entire police department received an order to withdraw from Lieberland and to establish a border contour around it. Lieberlanders were able to start building their nation again. While stories about the Lieberlanders' purposeless persecution, financed by taxpayers' money, still shattered Croatia, and guilty officers were questioned by judges for their acts, Lieberland started flourishing because of the talented and educated people who once sought more freedom in life. Lieberland became a solid example of governance based on people's responsibility, a high standard of living, and extensive technological automation where people governed collective finances and ruled themselves. Lieberland was the first country to demonstrate that with modern technology, no extensive governing body was needed anymore and it could live on donations instead of taxes. This created an opportunity for many. Tremendous capital from all around the world flowed into Lieberland and the surrounding area, which was previously relatively poor. The locals and natives were able to work under better conditions and for significantly more money. The value of their houses and land skyrocketed. The overall standard of living in the area multiplied and Lieberland, with its surroundings, evolved into a metropolis of commerce, science, and modern governance, thus giving the future generations born in the area a very good reason to stay. From what was just a group of people in tents, a whole new nation emerged and showed everyone that though the world seemed hard to change, a better life was possible.